Okay, maybe it wasn't the best year of my life necessarily. I don't really have any way to quantify that. But I think it was a pretty good year, nonetheless. Mm. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I am Leon Lush and thank you so much for joining me for a few short minutes. I do not take your attention for granted, so I really appreciate it. The clip you saw at the beginning was uh, from Logan Paul's video, Why 2017 Was the Best Year of My Life. This is a popular, common YouTube trend at this time of year, at the end of the year, people do like recap videos about the year that they've had in their own personal life and their year they've had on YouTube. And you know, when you watch someone like Logan Paul, for as much shit that he gets, he has honestly accomplished quite a bit as a 22 year old. And uh, I, you have to give him credit where credit's due. I guess I could start with this. At 22 years old, I bought my first house for $6.5 million and moved my two boys in with me. What's up? Hey! But I wasn't quite satisfied, so I had a koi pond put in. Painted the walls of the guest house. Your boy put a dent in the universe this year. Let's start with number one, internet domination. Low gang, we became the fastest channel to hit 10 million subscribers in the history of YouTube ever! <laughs> Guys, I also made a song with Designer. I flew a fan to Los Angeles to make a music video with him. I won two Teen Choice Awards, and then flew to Tennessee to watch the solar eclipse. Then I made it on Jimmy Kimmel, and then I broke a Maverick Bugatti. Yes, I broke that. And then I went to the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. Now, I think anyone after watching this may feel a little bit unaccomplished. I mean, he is an internet superstar, and he can probably fit more into one year as far as what's deemed exciting uh, than most normal people can. But I think sometimes over comparison can be detrimental to our own growth and our own success as the late great President Roosevelt said comparison is the thief of joy. And in this case, uh, it's easy to compare yourself to other YouTubers. If you're trying to be a YouTuber, there's always going to be people that are more successful and have more subscribers and get more views than you. But I think it's important to turn inward and compare yourself to yourself. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to look back on the past year very quickly and touch briefly on a couple of key points uh, in my YouTube life of 2017. I will So around this time last year, I had about 17 and a half thousand subscribers and I was growing very, very slowly. And I was just uploading when ideas would come to me or something would happen in the community, something would trend and I'd try to make a, a video about that. And for me, I never really had much of a framework or, or direction, so clearly not much has changed. But my end goal, the end game for me is always to try and make something that's entertaining. And that's of course uh, gonna be somewhat subjective, but I think in the first couple months of last year, I started to find my stride. I started to include segments of like reading comments at the end of a lot of the videos, which uh, from the feedback I've gotten, a lot of people seem to like. Jump high. And I was just kind of grinding out videos, you know, trying to get that practice to become a better YouTuber. And I wasn't making substantial money or getting that many views. So I was just doing it because I love doing it. And I still do it because I love doing it. I've just had a little more success towards the latter part of the year. So slow and steady was the name of the game for the first five months of the year. Fast forward to May of 2017. And like I said before, Logan Paul's done some cool stuff. He may have had his own television show, bought a $7 million mansion, wrestled an alligator. But what he didn't do, something that Leon Lush did do, was he uploaded a cover, or excuse me, I uploaded a cover on May 10th. Black hole sun, won't you come and wash away the rain of Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden and only eight days later, Chris Cornell hung himself. And I'm not, I'm not really trying to make a joke about that because it's a little bit somber, but it's just kind of weird. It was weird timing. It was like the first cover I had uploaded in several years and then he, a week later, I don't know. So take, take that, Logan Paul. Now, fast forward to June, I flew out to Anaheim and spent five days with a bunch of awesome creators at VidCon. My very first VidCon it was the first VidCon for a lot of us that were staying in the Airbnb together. And we had some incredible experiences. Now, one of the scenes from Logan Paul's year-end review where he briefly touches on this, uh, where he crashed VidCon and created kind of this flash mob. I was there for that and I almost got trampled. I don't know how I got trapped in it. Oh, shit. I was literally just standing there and a mob came. Oh, get me the fuck out of here. Jesus, I Jesus, get out. Get, out. Jesus. 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 get out. Get on the inside. Oh. 
But ultimately, it was a chance to get out of this little office I spent so much time in and fly over to Anaheim and just get to know some of these people in real life that I had spent so many months getting to know on Twitter and YouTube. And we got to just hang out and kind of fuck up the world for a few days together. And uh, it was a great experience, and I hope we can do it again soon. Oh, hell yeah. What's going on? Daddy's home, oh, baby. Hell yeah. hell Woo! Day two right now, getting ready to go to IHOP, rolling 10 deep with the crew. We got Bunty King up front. We got GTA Miami Vice right here. He's just as scary in real life as he is in the videos. Twitter's leading white supremacist. There he is. There he is. In the frame. Raygon, break Chris Raygon. Yeah, get out of here. Fast forward to July 22nd. I uploaded a song that I wrote and produced called Views. You could blow up tomorrow and by next week you might be nobody. I had a lot of great feedback about this song, and I certainly had plenty of people that thought it was garbage, but it is music, and that's pretty much how the story always unfolds. But for me personally, this was a project that was a lot of fun to work on and kind of embodied my feelings about YouTube uh, at that time, and still kind of very well. And it ended up becoming my outro song, which a lot of people comment about uh, in the videos, in recent videos. Now fast forward less than a week later, July 28th, I wrote and uploaded a little piano tune called Humility, which was kind of like a gentleman's diss on Jake Paul. And this is when things start to get a little spicy. You terrorize The decent people in your life You act like a pompous cunt. So uh, I uploaded the song, I put it on Twitter, Keemstar saw it, asked if he could use it on Drama Alert. I said, sure, no problem. So Keemstar uh, added it to the end of his, one of his Drama Alerts, which helped me get a little bit of exposure and some traffic to my channel, of course. And uh, I, I, do, I do have to thank him for that. And then two days later, or excuse me, the next day, the next day was the game changer. I uploaded my Lele Pons is remarkably unfunny video. And I think a combination of kind of the increased watch time my channel was getting from, from the traffic coming over from Drama Alert and the video itself, I think, performed pretty well. This was that one video that kind of propelled my channel uh, into the next level of being a YouTuber. And over the next several months, I would go on to, you know, reach 100,000 subscribers. I was gaining subs at a, a rate that was 20x what I was used to. I was getting way more views. All of my subsequent uploads after that video were getting more views than I was used to. And it was really just the catalyst uh, that helped grow my channel into the, the 100,000 plus subscriber range. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And I do have to, uh, unfortunately, give Keemstar some credit for throwing me some traffic at that time, I think helped kind of lift that video off the ground. And uh, here we are. So continuing through the end of the year up until now, I just continued to upload. I tried to do it as frequently as I could find the time to try and take advantage of this newfound growth I was having. And I was having a great time, I was getting more comments and being able to interact with people that were watching my content. Uh, and I'm just continuing to try and keep that going. Now, as any YouTuber knows, some months you do great and your videos bang and you're getting a lot of views and interaction, and other months you take a dip and some ideas might not uh, resonate as well with your audience, but that's that's part of the game. You're trying new things and you have good months and you have bad months. You just gotta kind of muscle through the bad ones and enjoy the good ones and keep uploading and keep fucking coming up with new ideas and making shit. So that's the plan. Listen, in, in, in mid-October, I hit 100,000 subscribers and for me, I think for anyone that's a really cool milestone as a YouTuber that was, you know, virtually uh, completely off the map at the beginning of the year, now at the end of the year to have 100,000 plus subs and a group of people or a certain audience of people that watch my videos and seem to enjoy them is a very uh, flattering and a uh, fantastic thing that I don't, I don't take for granted. Now I wanted to make a Christmas special so desperately, so badly, but it, 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 but it, 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 <laughs> still haven't learned to talk in 2017, clearly, <laughs> but it is with a heavy heart that I tell you that I was unable to, the month of December is just absolutely madness at my work and I was exhausted and working more shifts than usual and I didn't have time and I'm so sorry. So instead, Let's just throw a, a little clip from last year's Christmas special. Let's just watch a quick clip from last year's Christmas special. All I'm really trying to say is 
I have a lot of fun making content. Uh, I've been able to get back into the keys a little bit and express a, a side of myself I don't usually show necessarily in the real world. Uh, and from me to you watching on the other side of this camera on your computer or your tablet or your phone screen, I just genuinely want to say thank you uh, for sticking around and engaging, commenting and, and all that shit because I'm having a great time. And that is one sentiment that has not changed in 2017 uh, is my gratitude for you guys sticking with me, engaging, watching my videos. Truly, uh, truly appreciate it. And I hope that you all had a wonderful year and a good holiday and have a great New Year's Eve, man. I don't know what 2018 has in store for us, for the Tomato Mafia, but I'm ready for it. I'm excited and I'm gonna try and continue to get better. Anyways, 2018 goal. Everyone makes their New Year's goals. My goal, I think, uh, is pretty modest. I wanted to make something that I thought would be easy to achieve. So I set my goal for 2018 uh, as 36 million subscribers. PewDiePie is like 50 plus million, almost 60 million subscribers. He's something like Swedish looking rat that dyes his hair occasionally and screams about video games and sits in his office and talks about dumb shit, similar to what I do. He has 60 million subscribers. If I can't get 36 million in 2018, then what kind of fucking loser am I? I don't know. What do you think? Hashtag get Leon Lush to 36 million subscribers. Anyways, I'll, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, have a great New Year's Eve. I appreciate the fuck out of all you. And deuces. Deuce. Deuce.